Welcome. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the need for multi-mode digital control and some of the design requirement. And in the last week, 12th week, we will consider multiple implementation as well as hardware case studies of multi-mode control. So, in this lecture, we will first talk about, we need to understand the need for multi-mode control, what are the control objective for wide operating range like wide input voltage and load current range. Then we want to revisit digital PWM, PSM and PFM control technique and we want to do uh, you know consider a few multi mode digital control techniques. So, we have discussed digital voltage mode control in a buck converter in sufficient detail both in week 2, week 3 in MATLAB simulation as well as uh, week 8 we have implemented with hardware implementation Verilog HDL based coding. And we have also discussed digital pulse keeping control pulse keep, pulse keep modulation in lecture number 50 we are not going to repeat again. And now, what is the need for multi-mode control? Some of the generic requirement which include like a tight voltage regulation when there is a change in input voltage or load current, then we need to achieve very fast transient response, we need to achieve very high power conversion, conversion efficiency and then we need to also reduce EMI that means these are the generic objective. And if you go for high load current, then we need to achieve most of the commercial required product requires some fixed frequency because of the some filter design aspect point of view. And we also want to achieve some EMI reduction or spectral space spread spectrum technique. So, this is linked with some spread spectrum technique. And then light load requirement, we want to reduce switching loss then we want to also consider the constraint in the ripple voltage, it should not exceed too much, it should be within the limit. And finally, for all cases, particularly in light load also, we need to achieve high efficiency with wide input voltage and load current range. So now, wh what are the difficulty? The challenges are how to achieve smooth controller transition. Suppose we are using a PWM and PSM or PWM or PFM, how to make sure to have a smooth transition between PFM and PWM like that. Next, how to avoid integrator wind up? Suppose if you are uh, operating PFM or PSM, uh, but you have a PWM running in the background, let us say, and there is an integrator, then there is a possibility of integrator wind up problem. Similarly, if you are going from PSM to PWM, so that time also the error can be large and that may cause integrator wind up problem. So, you need to make some anti wind up arrangement of the integrator. Then, we need to optimize the resources because if there are two, three controller and each each controller, if each controller require dedicated resources, then the resource requirement will go up and that may require more silicon area, more power consumption, more cost. So, we need to keep in mind the resource constraint. And finally, we need we can do power gating. Suppose if you are using PWM and PSM, if you are operating at a light load condition when the power output is already low, so we need to save battery power. So, that time we should not burn a power because we, sh we should not activate the PWM mode, it should be disabled. That means, we can save power because it is operating under PSM. So, this power getting is possible based on mode selection. So, let us consider if you are operating in PWM and if you operate continuously PWM, then the switching loss which is mainly the driver loss that will remain fixed. So, as a result, the losses component some static loss will be fixed. So, if you continue to operate in PWM, there will be a drastic reduction in the efficiency and that is not desirable. But if we use a PSM, then the switching frequency is getting reduced because pulse keeping number of skip cycle is increasing or you can use PFM also. That way, your static loss is also getting reduced. So, you can save power and you can improve the efficiency. So, if you use PSM, the number of skip cycle increases as the load current decreases then the switching frequency decreases effectively with the load current and the switching loss decreases with load current and we can improve the light load efficiency. Then how to make practical implementation of this multi mode control? 
So, we can start with the digital PWM that we have discussed in sufficient detail I think in lecture week 8, week 9, week 8 and week 10 we have discussed in sufficient detail. Then we have also discussed digital pulse keeping modulation this is the basic architecture. Then how to implement digital pulse keeping that also we have discussed in sufficient detail because there is a PSM logic, DPWM logic. So, this whole thing can be enabled to make this multi mode control. Suppose we want to design a PWM PSM multi mode control. So, this is our overall block and in the subsequent lecture we are going to consider this multi mode control with Verilog implementation program also we are going to do. But let us take we want to implement this PWM PM. So, if you go inside then this consists of digital voltage mode that is your PWM this is like your PWM DPWM and this part is your digital PSM. So, what I have to do both of them will generate a gate signal that means digital let us say if it is a DPWM. So, it will generate a QPWM and if it is a digital PSM DPSM let us say it is generating a QPSM. So, how, how to get gate signal? So, for this case we will use a dead time circuit because to generate QH and QL and this will be standard QH. So, your effective high side gate signal can be taken as QH for this case if you use DPWM or it can be marked with this PSM and QL either can be taken from dead time for synchronous configuration or it can be set to 0 for DCM. So, this can be done and this is something similar that means this block is DPWM, this is your DPWM. If you see this output is coming from a dead time circuit and it has a high and low and we are talk calling it a temporary. Then there is a max. If this signal is selected as 1, then it will take PSM. If it is 0, then it will take PWM. And you see when it is 0, that means it is taking this channel. So, your high side gate signal will be simply connected to the dead time output, output of the dead time circuit related to the DPWM clock for the high pulse. And if it is one, 0, you see your low pulse will be taking to the dead time circuit output which is a low side pulse. But suppose if it is 1, then this will be connected to this if 1, if 1, it is if it is 0, if 0. And this will be simply connected to this one if it is 1 and this is nothing but the PSM and this block we have implemented it is our digital PSM. And this circuit we are going to implement in the subsequent lecture in Verilog and we want to also uh, first we want to synthesize and then we want to implement using FPGA prototype. So, this is one of the example of multi mode control where the you can make an external assessment that means I want to enable either PWM or PSM. So, that is the user choice because sometime what happen suppose we are talking about a load transient response. So, let us consider a scenario where the converter is undergoing a load transient response. So, it was under high load condition suppose it has undergoes a load transient response. So, if you use PWM let us say directly go to DCM then what will happen if you draw the if you draw corresponding output voltage waveform. So, this time to this point there will be a large overshoot it will remain. So, one way to cut down the overshoot you may enable this and then come back and then go to your DCM operation. So, they will, whenever we will consider this case study we will discuss in detail. So, maybe that we will wait for this case study to come and then we can show what is the effect that is coming. So, for the time being we are only giving the concept the PWM PSM. So, this is just a select line either it will take PWM or PSM, but here there is still further scope for optimization because if you use a common DPWM block let us say we will show if you use a common DPWM block it may be needed for here. So, we can minimize resources, but the controller part is something which must be there for normal PWM 
and this will be replaced by a constant voltage for this and we will try to optimize some aspect in the subsequent lecture with Verilog implementation. So, in summary we have discussed the need for multi mode control, we have discussed control objective for wide operating range and we have revisited some digital architecture which we have already presented for digital PWM, digital PSM and digital PFM control technique and we have discussed PWM, PFM, PWM, PFA, PSM the digital that means that digital multi mode control that we have just block diagram we have discussed. So, in the subsequent lecture we are also going to consider what is called EMI reduction or the spectral spreading that is another feature. So, in the multi mode what will be our objective? In the subsequent week we are will be taking multi mode digital control. So, what will be our objective? Your objective get fast transient, fast transient response, high light load efficiency, light load efficiency, smooth transition. and also EMI reduction. So, this feature we have not yet discussed. So, first we will explore this feature and then we want to incorporate all this to come up with a multi mode control technique in the subsequent lecture and we also want to write Verilog programming as well as we want to implement using FPGA device. That is it for today. Thank you very much.